On this edition of Search and Restore, it's the journey of a well-worn Mustang, a story of extreme patriotism after 9-11, and a promise made to a young son that was shattered in an instant. We'll help out this U.S. Army veteran and his family by resurrecting their classic coupe and in turn pay tribute to the men and women who risk everything to ensure our freedom. It's all calm inside our 50,000 square foot tech center as our volunteer build team anxiously await their latest project. Some 1,200 miles to the west, build leader Tim Strange and Tommy Boschers are moving towards their latest pickup point. There we are, Fort Build, on the way to Colorado. Oh yeah, man, I haven't ever been to Colorado. Haven't you? No. It's been a long drive, hasn't it? Not quite a hop, skip, and a jump because you gotta add like a long walk in there somewhere. <laughs> so in this build, we chose a member of the military. He got injured over in Iraq when he was serving his country. And got a Purple Heart. I fix up his old 67 Mustang for him. Uh, it's the only car that I've ever really wanted to have ever since I was a little kid. His I, name I, is I Paul Kaler, Iraq War veteran and current staff sergeant with the Colorado National Guard. He sent in his application with support from his mom, his wife, and three boys, who all asked Tim and the team for help with his Mustang coupe. I got this from a soldier, and actually, my brother gave me the money for it, which was only 1500 bucks, and that was back in uh, 2004. And so pretty much it's been sitting in its current state since then. We were drawn to Paul's story not because of financial hardship or a broken down Mustang. He made a choice 10 years ago like thousands of red-blooded Americans did after the attack on 9-11. Seeing the Twin Towers fall, this 28-year-old divorced father of two decided to join the Army. In my mind, it was an immediate, this is something that I have to do now. How am I going to make it work for my family? His five-year-old son, Nate, had the answer. I don't know how he got the idea in his head, but he thought that if I were to become a cook in the Army, it would be okay. And so he, he basically made me promise that if I joined the Army, then you'd just be a cook. And I was like, okay. Paul quit his job, packed his bags, and after basic, found himself with the 329th Field Artillery Unit in the Iraqi desert. While out delivering ice one afternoon, the unthinkable happened. Somebody shot an RPG through the door right, right next to where I was standing. And all I saw was sparks and smoke and, you know, immediately my ears were plugged up and ringing and, and I didn't really know what was going on. Luckily, I hadn't taken off my gear. And when the shrapnel came through the door and hit me, it shredded the back of my truck all the way down, popped two tires where I was standing and busted the driver's side mirror. And I got it in my, uh, mostly in my Kevlar and in the back of my, my uh, body armor. But I had the wounds to Paul's face and neck earned him a purple heart. And after four years active duty, he left the Army and joined the National Guard so he could spend more time with his family. He still serves his country while taking night classes on his way to a degree in family counseling. Tim from Search and Restore, I brought Tommy from Muscle Car with me. You're really touched by your story. We want to grab your Mustang, take it back to Tennessee, and build it for you. Take it. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, guys. <laughs> wow. Brought the big rig all the way across country. So does it run? Oh, yeah, it runs. It runs well. I, run. I, I'm, it runs. <laughs> Driver's side floor rust, you know, from moisture. Yeah, I've seen these cars rusted out so bad. I'm not gonna be, you know, too picky about it. Right. But um, yeah, purple, I don't know. What color do you want? What color? Gray. Red. Cherry red. red. Black. Blue. My husband deserves this because, you know, he does so much for everyone else, you know, just serving in the military plus his family and friends. It's just nice for him to get something in return. What do you like to see on the inside of this thing? I'm not too picky. I'd like to see, uh, you know, the seats look a little better. Buckets, maybe a console. Yeah, console would be nice. A radio. That don't sound right. V8. 
engine like that be nice the thing that i love most about these older cars is the styling and, and the way they were built back in those days and you just can't get that kind of design and, and style out of modern cars so I think the first place i'll take it when i get it back is uh straight over to my dad's house since he's uh out in tennessee and i haven't seen him in a while so i'll just drive over to his place see you in a month we'll take good care of it sounds good Do thanks good job yes sir thank you They're pretty excited, don't you? Yes, sir. They threw out a whole bunch of different color combinations, yeah, though, didn't yeah. they? Purple, red, black, gray. Then at the end, the little kid gray. said yellow. Yellow. Next, the Mustang arrives to a full house of volunteers. But after teardown, a surprise under the paint brings the project to a screeching halt. This car is a T-bone. Stay tuned. You guys ready to see this thing? I'm interested in the color you said it was. Yeah, yeah you weren't joking. Dude. Don't let it make you seasick. We're keeping the color, right? <laughs> Does it run? Look at that. Nice. Tractor motor. It's a squirting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we know what the car looked like when we picked it up. So we call ahead and ordered full quarters. We've got doors here. We've got fenders. We've got full floors. We've got plenty of sheet metal here, just in case it needs everything. It's going to need a lot. Probably have to put some fresh tires on it. Looks like they're a little dry rotted. Other than that, it's good to go. What do you guys think of that interior in there? We got the guys here from Hudson's Rod and Customs going to help tear down. They're going to throw one awesome interior, full custom, once it's all done. The tearaway interior, you get tired of it, just tear it off. Don't hit the welding tank! <laughs> I've actually right built there. probably half a dozen 67 Mustangs, so I kind of dig these cars. It'd be fun to get into another one. I got my wing vent out, but I can't get my door window out now. It's no secret, I hate glass work. I really don't think I knew any cuss words until I started working on cars. Got a pretty big vocabulary. At least he's not alone. The rest should be pain free. Yes, no. <laughs> Since the majority of this Mustang is going to scrap and we have plenty of hands on deck, it's not long before we can remove some patches from the past. You know, it's really not all that bad. A purist would rebuild the classic inline and drive train. The best we can do is save it for them. Looks like another media blast job for Milestone Custom Paint and Body. The Hudson crew can now do their thing, stripping away the tails from their canvas of wire and springs. On this season, we haven't done a what I call full custom hot rod, street rod style interior. So I'm literally looking forward to doing that on this build. And we can do something like that to help these guys out. We're more than glad to do it. This is Homer yeah. Hudson, owner. So to come down and donate a day. This is Will, that, his son. It's, it's well worth it. They brought along it's corn. Corn dog. Yeah, his last name is Corn. That was the main one that stuck. I even got a tattoo for that one, so. It's gonna be this color and black two-tone mostly. That wouldn't get dingy as deep. I think I got them talked into some colored stitching that they don't usually do, but I think it'll really make it pop. We can do something at the front of the people come into the shop and they got one way of wanting to go, but when he gets done, they're going the other direction. I think in my opinion would be the green. Does the green, green on it. Yeah. Usually he winds up right, so I'm just going about my business and, and do what he says. I got the ultimate <laughs> faith in these dudes will do it right. See ya. The morning brings good news. The blasting is done and it's ready for final inspection. Don't you see the, the way that quarter's on there? That's screaming, hey, we got a problem over here. Wow. Those sharp eyes belong to Alan Shepley and David Sams of Mustang Central. This car's been hit. It's been hit hard. Wow, well, it does have a pucker right on it. Yep. This car's been T-boned. So we called our neighbor, James Earlywine from Brown's Body Shop, a pro at pulling frames. Yeah, it looks like it needs to come back a little bit. Right. Scale one ten, probably three. One thing we can do is get her and measure it and see where we can go from there. Well, it's probably you know we could probably just move around a little bit and fix it. Uh, but you know you, you stop and think about the whole prospect of what we're doing. This guy's in the military. He gave it his time. He, he gave it his all, and so we want to give it our all. We don't want to give it half. So 
best thing to do is have it pulled and, and do it right. We're gonna let this guy do his magic and we're gonna take the afternoon off. Where's the pool? <laughs> the only swimming ahead will be in a sea of metal, sparks, and dust. After the break, four decades of wear is wiped out when Search and Restore continues. Day three begins just down the street. You did awesome, man. Where the Mustang took a half day detour to correct a rear quarter T-bone. The guys from Brown's Body Shop here local worked all afternoon, jumped right on it for us, pulled that smashed inner fender well out. I think it's time to get her back to the shop and start cutting all these panels off. Now we can get back to what we were gonna do a day ago. Fortunately, Tim recruited some top-notch talent, like the guys from Mustang Central, pony car experts. Putting a full pan in, so it's gonna include the front section, back section, under the rear seat, and the tunnel. So we got to pull all that out first, and then we're gonna put the new one in. A couple of gearhead brothers jumped in on rust repair to the front apron. I'm Matt Dockery. My name is uh, Jason Dockery. I'm an iron worker fabricator. I'm here with Wild Tech. He's the older brother. He's more of the hands-on. He's the very artistic side. When we were little, we used to butt heads like this. Yeah, since I was the youngest, I always had to be better or else I'd get picked on every day. <laughs> you put us together, it's 100%. The two come from a family of welders, but it was Jason who upped his skills at Wyotech's Laramie campus. Chassis fab and street rod are just a few of the courses that have prepared him for an automotive career. Another recent grad is Zach Booth, who was handpicked by his instructor, John Christensen. It's been great to see him out here cutting some sheet metal, doing his welding, doing his grinding, you know, going to. He doesn't have to be uh, asked to do things. He knows how to cut spot welds. He knows all these procedures. He's been taught them over the last 12 months at WildTech, and he's performing up to the highest standard right now. He's just doing a great job. Nice panel you made there. It's a different experience actually being here, seeing where everything goes on. Uh, I never really thought I'd have the chance to do this. Bumper bolt heads are kind of ugly. See how it's just boom, 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 boom. And we're going to weld it all together from the inside. And once we do that, we'll take the hardware off and then uh, button weld and fill in the holes where the hardware was. All the plugs filled. This is where the bolts used to be. We realized we had a little bit of an issue with the tow boards up at the front. We don't have any tow boards here with us, so right now we're cutting and fabricating some pieces to fix that damage, and then we can progress and get that full floor pin set in. This right here is actually part of the outer wheelhouse, which has a little bit of rust in it. Once they get this welded in and cleaned up, then I'll come back and fill in the actual quarter panel. I gotta take this seat riser and cut all this excess floor pan that we're taking out, trim it up, because this seat riser is gonna go back in the car. So once we have that done and get the new fans in, we'll drop these originals back in for the seats to bolt to. For restoration Mustang parts, we called National Parts Depot, who stepped up big time and sent us everything we needed. At this stage, that meant all the body panels and a full floor pan. Jam up, pan fits great. So we're well on our way to wrap this uh, floor pan part of it up. Mustangs are known for having bigger door gaps, and it's not, it's pretty good up here. This is the first time I've ever had the chance to work with Tim, and it has been amazing. But that's minor right there. But without heating metal, cutting metal, doing everything with bolt adjustment uh, and hand tools, and in 15 minutes, Tim fit that fender to that door, and I just amazed me. Yesterday, I was really bummed when we found that damage. Today, totally exceeded my expectations. Things went really smooth. I just hope it keeps going that way. Ahead, our military Mustang enters its mock-up stage. Who's excited? Yeah! Stay tuned. Last night, we got all the sheet metal hung from MPD. Right now, we're just finishing its quarter panel. Rick's working on the quarter panel extension. We're putting a Shelby back in, but not the Shelby tail lights. So there's a little bit of fab work that's got to be done there. Hopefully today we're going to mock up the motor, transmission, all the exhaust, and bend all the brake lines. But of course, every build has its problems. We have a uh, block and a bell housing for a Ford that doesn't bolt up. We have a quick tech question. Hey, this mock-up transmission, what's this supposed to be for? They only bolt together with three bolts. Would the bolt on the bottom go through the dowel pin? The one we're getting should made up to it right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Bye. He uses 
modern guts in an older transmission. No problem, we're good. One example of why the mock-up is so important, Rick Bacon and his body extension. This is awesome. It's not fitting. When you're working with fiberglass parts, if something doesn't fit, you need to keep whittling it down until you find something that does fit. And I've whittled it down pretty small. <laughs> the nice thing about a volunteer effort, you never know who's going to show up with good stuff, like the president of Be Cool. Hey, Roger. I'm Tim. Hey, Tim. How are you doing, Roger good. Rosebush? You brought us all kinds of goodies. Look Man, at that. Hey, look at this. This is what uh, what we consider to be our module kit. You've really got an upfit radiator that will take care of, you know, about 700 horsepower in this vehicle. That should slide right in there and look and fit like a professional upgrade. Yep, it'll mount right to the factory locations. Look at that. And you'll have 2011 cooling in a 1967 car. Thanks for bringing all this yeah. good stuff, and thanks for volunteering and staying until the car's done. You're, That's uh, really you're nice. You're welcome. I, honey, I've <laughs> got to change my schedule tonight. The work continues, one piece at a time. The new transmission from Bowler arrives. The Flowmaster exhaust kit's tacked in, leaving only a couple more things left to mock up. So what we got here is a complete AN stainless brake line from Speedway Motors. This stuff is the best flare and stainless line in it. It also comes with all the stainless flex braided. Not only that, but comes with instructions too. There you go, Tommy. Into week one, all the mock-ups done. Floor pans are in, quarter panels done, rust repair all done. The Wild Tech guys were a lot of help this week. And those guys just jumped right in and did anything you asked of them. Tim actually referred a restoration shop in Minnesota. I'm gonna go there, send out a couple of emails, see if I can get in and tour the shop, meet the owner. He's still here and it's late at night. That means a lot in the hot rod world. Hard work pays off. And next time on Search and Restore, hard work seems like an understatement when a dozen more volunteers arrive to get the body ready for and out of the paint booth. Plus, Reliable Beast is the best description for the engine the guys have planned. <laughs>